Oh, the band. So oh, Luna, perhaps. Oh, troll. troll. Okay. okay. I, I, yep. So troll. we yeah, had same, a long conversation about this after the LFY draft. Like, yeah. I don't like Troll as a hero right now, but I think there are still lineups where you he fits are in really troll well. List. Oh my God. Do not be Trollist. No hands. No need, so if I no if I throw out hit. troll stats in my racial profiling, is that it? Now? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. You All right. Are. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gods, very quickly, which way are you going? This one definitely secret. I think yeah. much more than last game, they've got another really good draft and fanatic or team right. five problems. Two I zero agree. for Gons. I agree. All right, no takers for the Fnatic love. No love for Fnatic whatsoever here on the panel. Um, will we get any love from the casters, I wonder? Uh, let's head into game number two then, as Fnatic are on the rack in the upper bracket. Can Top Secret uh, take their top place in that bracket? Let's find out as we head over there now, right now. Well, we certainly had love for Fnatic's uh, strong showing in the first 40 minutes of that first game against Secret. They at least put on a pretty good show against one of the top three teams in the world. So. Hopefully, they can do even better for this game number two. A troll pickup for Secret. I'm not sure what the, what's with the troll pickups lately. I think they just like it because a hero. Because they're one of the few teams that I see like somewhat pick it. Yeah. All. But they like their weird flavor picks in general. When you're like kind of out of the meta, then people like forget what it's like to play against heroes like that. It's pretty cool. You're like kind of you're trying to establish yourself as like almost liquid in a way that you can just kind of pick some of these heroes and. Well, you're kind of an, an you're at an inherent advantage when you can play these like kind of like off-brand heroes because yeah. people aren't used to playing them and it forces like different looks out of you, right? We talked about how that was so important, like the ability to consistently do something that nobody else is doing and being ahead of that curve and ahead of that trend means that you're a more successful team. Whenever we see Troll, it is always with a really strong combination with the attack speed is super value. Here we see with the OD. Uh, is there anything else about the Troll that you see in this game that makes him strong? Uh, I think that it'll be okay in the laning phase. Uh, he's very good against the Ross awards. Like Clockwork doesn't do against yeah. much against him either because you can get rid of the cogs quick, quickly. He can man fight against uh, Monkey King potentially. Yeah, miss percentage. It's annoying the against the the GA and stuff like that though. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking about was the the fact that on these tough. But at the same time, we saw um, LFY also picked up the. Um, the troll, and they also tried to do it in a matchup that was not uh, very favorable for more safe laners. It was up against a tight hunter, um, apparently thinking that maybe Rage Four uh, Troll would be able to deal well with that. Do you think that's a, a similar concept here? The Omni yeah. think he's going to be able to do okay against the Omni Knight in the laning phase and not require too much support help. I mean, the hero can always just hit neutrals, so it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. Like these safe laners that can always just like default to hitting neutrals don't really care too much. Of course, it's probably not going to be just an Omni Knight. We're going to have a clockwork roaming around. Same thing though for Secret. They've got a tight hunter off lane with uh, two very good combination of support, the Rubik and the Sand King. Looks like they are going to try and have a go here on Secret, going for a contest on this bounty room. So we didn't actually say, do you favor one lineup or the other? I think Secret's lineup might be a little bit better. Why is that? Uh, I just think that their team fight might be a little bit more uh, prevalent in the mid game. Mm. TP out from Fauna. Gonna be close, but he will manage to make it out. He also will double up that creep wave pushing into him, so he'll feel pretty good about that. Midwatch just takes a huge slew of damage. Holy cow. He really thought he was going to get that courier. <laughs> <laughs> Universe, healing himself up. He's going to be slowed down. Secret, give it the full defensive tri lane here around the troll to make sure they actually keep the Omni Knight down. Pilot die. Watches on. Battery Assault already used, and Battery Assault level 1 as well, meaning he won't have the cogs to be able to help get the uh, adjustment to this creep equilibrium to make it a little bit easier for Universe. This is certainly not going to be the same kind of free farming Universe that we saw in game number 1, where he was granted an easy one. 1v1 matchup. Yeah, and in mid lane, Abed doing just fine because of that early courier kill attempt. It's a pretty decent lane for TA, right? Up against the uh, OD. Yeah, you're all right. Like, you're going to get the farm. Uh, I think back in the past it was a little bit different, but now that OD's astral requires him to be pretty much melee range, it's quite difficult. Toss back and TP, but... Okay. This time around. 
was like that last creep hit. Yeah. Full creep wave, two heroes. Not enough for Pylite to be to be able to make a TP out like that. But again, doubling up the creep wave, trying to make it easier for Universe to be able to find some farm. We're definitely seeing very concerted efforts by supports and even cores to shut down offlane pulling, which has become quite in vogue. It's become the big thing for all the offlaners are trying to. Monkey King versus a Tidehunter up at the top lane means that we don't really need too much support there. Abed may actually be in some trouble here. Pilot Die has already shown himself. Ooh, nice hit there with his eye blades, but Puppy is going to be able to get the double Boral Strike. What a hit! The Sandstorm as well, that's going to be able to burn through the refraction nice and quick. And we won't get the last hit for that too. Oh, even better. Very nice rotation so far by the supports as... Fnatic going to make an attempt on Fada's life, who should be okay. Yeah, he'll uh, take away some of the damage for the Anchor Smash, but it won't stop Envy from getting that uh, big plus uh, for the Jenga Mastery. Same time, like, Fada hasn't died, which is wild, because normally <laughs> Fada has died by this point, and he yeah. doesn't really care, and he's already up there again. But I think he realizes, like, this matchup is a little bit different. Oftentimes when Fada plays these heroes, uh, he doesn't care about dying because the co the commitment is quite a bit, but it's a monkey king. Like he'll just build up the stacks again. Yeah. Like he'll do it to you. So you gotta like play a little more. bit more careful, right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Jump in. They are gonna be able to find Fada here, and it looks like he will finally go down. Fortunately, we have cursed Fada. Commentators cursed out, but at the same time, they are going to be able to get a pretty good trade off. They can actually kill Abed here. Nice banishment there from Midwan, just to make sure the clockwork can't interfere and they can finish up Abed, but barely gets off the refraction in time. Pilot Eye jumps low, but he is able to get a good Cogs pushback on a puppy in the Absor. Yeah, Midwan this mid lane, Universe finally starting to pick up some levels. Feels very comfortable now that there's not three heroes breathing down his neck. Secret really wanted that kill as the rotation was quite heavy from them. Their two supports, when they make moves like this, they're not pulling or anything like that. They're not soaking XP in the lane. They heavily rely on these kills. Did you see that? A couple levels. He's just walking over. I thought he was going to pick up the bounty rune, and then he actually just left it for Yapsor. What a nice guy. Yeah. He's now completed his phase boots, so that will really help out his landing phase up against the Omni Knight. That's the Absorb though, dude. You, you give him like 10% of everything, because mm. he'll pay a pack. He just needs to take a little bit off the top in the beginning. He's so close to level 3, that was probably a reason why. He's almost got his Arcane Boots done. Oh yeah, that, that's actually huge, Arcane Boots. Invest in the Absorb and he'll invest in you. Mm. Purification for some CS. Universe getting what he can. Ah, but meanwhile, let's see. 19 and 5 compared to 18 and 11 right now from mid one. Definitely picking up a bit more denies. That's classic OD with the imprisonment. Makes it a bit difficult for most mids to deal with that. But Abed is still keeping pace or even ahead when it comes to the regular CS. Yeah. Seeing a very good job despite uh, getting killed that one time. And this is like actually a pretty titanic matchup. It's like the 2C juggernauts playing against each other in mid lane. Yeah. I love when it's like that. I relish these like mid battles. Especially when there's not a whole lot of interference from the supports. Yeah. You can't say no interference. That just honestly so. doesn't happen in Dota anymore. It's like, but if I was watching this game in game, game client, I'd just be watching the mid matchup the entire time. Who do you think's better? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you that question. And it's kind of irrelevant because, you know, mid one's team has had so much more success. So I guess you have to say mid one in that regard. I mean, who would you want on your team? We're able to pick one of them for veggies. Uh, I hear, I hear, uh, Abed's really quiet. So probably mid one. Fada, a better trouble here. Is he really, though? Let's see, they do have another shackle. Didn't think DJ actually had enough mana for that one. Just barely, though. Fauna turns, fights, does what he can. He knows he's going to be dying here. The long, long chase. The Monkey King of the Shatter Shaman. Yeah. 
all the way over there. Meanwhile, Universe is actually going to be gone on here. They're going to be able to get the Burrow Strength. No opportunity for a Repel just yet. He's going to be comboed up pretty well. Purification, now the Repel, and they can turn with Pylite Die. Able to grab Yapsor. No Telekinesis to be able to throw him outside of his own cogs. So Yapsor is just stuck at the Mercy, which there is none coming out from Pylite Die. Yeah, that was a little bit weird. Yeah, that was, uh... Maybe they forgot who their safe lane hero was. A troll does not give you a whole lot of burst damage or anything like that. He does so. not. He's not going to provide anything for a while. Yeah. So for them to make that attempt, like, that's an Omni Knight that you left alone for quite some time. Like, he's not easy to kill anymore. But Certainly not. Well, they're going to go again. Hey, does he just heal? And he doesn't care about it? Purification. Yeah, I... Fool me once. Fool me. Fool me twice. What was it like the. You're not gonna fool me again. You having a George Bush moment yeah, there? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Isn't that what he said? That, that's what I was trying to. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I can't remember the exact quote that he's like, fool me once, shame on you. I know yeah, he didn't want to say shame on me. He says, like, fool me, can't get fooled again. Yeah, okay, that's like what that. it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I knew he was trying to not say it because, you know, if he says that, they'll replay that a hundred times and over. over. Yeah. And it turns out he, uh, it still gets replayed over yeah. and over and over again. Get, can't get fooled again. <laughs> uh, but they did. <laughs> they made the classic mistake last game, you know, where they just kept going on the razor. This time, the shoe's on the other foot. Mm. Man, There's me? so many sayings to go with this one. If they go for it a third, we can even throw it third times a yeah. charm. Third times a charm. You see, it's easy being a commentator, guys. You just add no, was, various no, sayings. I would, I would continue. I would continue the uh, the J Cole song. <laughs> Let it rain on you. <laughs> so puppy's just like walking around. And that's the downside, is like when you were successful in the early game with these kills, like you want to continue to do them, you know. You get a little bit bloodthirsty. Like these kills can keep the good times never stop, Cap. But the good times always stop in Dota unless you're playing against people significantly worse than you. And we saw from that first game. Yeah, that's, that's not the case at all. These are pretty the evenly matched teams. Smoke up. DJ and Pylai die. Not sure what they are thinking they're going to get here. I see Yapsor Universe is going to come over and contest that pull. I, I'm thinking they, they don't want Yapsor, right? They, they want a troll kill out of this smoke. Yeah, yeah. I definitely do. But unfortunately, Yapsor is going to prove to be a bit of a craw. As his telekinesis is definitely going to slow things down quite a bit if they try and wrap and go for Ace. Not even sure if they can make this play. He's still just chilling out in the trees, maybe waiting for uh, Yapsor to go for another pull or something and just take that easy kill. Ace right now just continues to farm. They got a decent trap set up for him. Like maybe they kill Yapsor. Yapsor's pretty much a core. Pilot I gotta show himself now. They both pop out. They managed to get the hex, but it's far too late for them to be able to go for that. I mean, if anything, Ace can actually fight this one out. He's gonna try the cogs push back. Good play from Pilot I Still managed to get the telekinesis, but they repel up DJ. Puppy's gonna they walk with him, him though to make sure he can get the burst strike. Uh, right in time as the repel runs out. Universe actually trying for the ultimate there with a TP out from DJ. That's a smart play. Very nice. They only have physical damage after they've thrown down that Burrow Strike and uh, the Fate Bolt out. We talked about how the Guardian Angel was going to be so useful. Yeah. There it is. I like that adaptation. Omni Knight saw a lot of them just go for like a 404 build, but he picks up the early uh, early repel, knowing it was important when it comes to dealing with that chain stun. He also picks up the early Guardian Angel. That was just a nice play overall. Like. The roster realizes like there's that half period where his uh, where his repels fading, yeah. so he goes through the hex onto the sand king, which allows universe enough time to reset, get his ulti off. Dave. Please here. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower. Another go for attempted one at that. With a bottom lane push, they just wrap around, easily able to take that tower. Troll, it's one of the big advantages of this hero. Left alone, can take your objectives pretty quickly. They still got that siege wagon, so they're going to try and keep going. The universe does uh, pretty smartly get close enough to be able to hold the uh, 
the creep wave off the tower, and that'll be a quick abrupt end to that push on the tier two. They actually move to defend their own tier one off lane tower to make sure that uh, Fnatic can't even score here. But Eternal Envy and DJ are going to make an interesting move themselves. After pushing into that offlane tower, we got to smoke up and wrap into mid, something that mid one is probably not expecting here. The smoke's going to pop as the trap goes down as well, really making sure they just get the combination of stuns here, not letting mid one get anything cast off. Not sure if they're going to be able to turn that into a push, but it definitely was a worthy gank being able to stop the OD, the big carry of Secret. Yeah, and he's going to be a large part of their strategy is uh, getting a kill on him slows down a lot of his momentum because this hero takes a while before he gets online and he can do things like flash farm. Yeah. So, nice kill. Does open up some space though for Fada. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. I thought that was like a design feature right now. Like, Good work, uh, JJ. He shook the screen yeah, a little. Yeah, he shook it loose, you know? Yeah. Get Fix it. Oh, oh, there it goes. God damn. That is a, a world-class observer right there. It knows all the tricks of the trade. He just fixed that for us. Really? Yeah. Okay, we didn't notice this, but... <laughs> Come on, PJ. I'm trying to compliment you. Get your head in the game. Highlight that goes down. DJ is going to be slowed down by the gush. Puppy should be able to follow that up with a burrow strike. A second kill for secrets. Yapsor with the faithful last hit. Invest in Yapsor. Yeah. We, that's like the. He's, he's making sure to invest in himself right now. For sure, dude. It's like the Bulba Tornado. You know? The what? The Bulba Tornado. You never heard of this? No. It's like when Bulba used to play mid. You know, a long time ago. Yeah, a long, long poker, time ago. Right? And Bulba pulled that thought as Fata might actually die here. Mid one, he's going to be okay, but the Tide Hunter's not going to be as lucky. He actually gets off the Ravage, but the Repel is still there on Eternal Levy, so he didn't get stunned up. Not sure if Yapsir would have saved him anyway. Yapsir actually revealing his positioning there with a Fate Bolt. He does have the Cogs. He's going to have to right click his way out of his own Cogs there. Eternal Levy did not have the spring up to be able to. Uh, catch Yapsor in that awkward position. They're still going to try and fight this one. He's got the Repel, but he's got no mana to support. He just picks it up and just in time. Right? He's eternally to Envy. Tries to throw down the stuff. DJ's, DJ's on the other side of things. Yapsor is just saying space created. I have taken creeps off the tower. Heroes off the tower as best I can. In the end, though, it still results in his death. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Secret going to make the same play here for the support pylite die. I thought we stopped doing this, by the way. Good TP out. But, oh, man. I actually thought that was going to be good enough, but never mind. I thought we stopped doing that. I thought we stopped leaving supports in safe lane towers to try and, like, kind of half defend and prolong the life. I think that they thought that they were going to save the Tide Hunter. Mm. Yaps are probably thought there were some cool moves to make down there. Yeah. I mean, normally he'd find some crazy ass ways to like survive that. He's like, I'll oh, just steal one of Omni's spells and it'll all work out. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, I'll get purification. It, 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 it almost always works out, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm, yeah, sure. Yeah. And conversely, you know, DJ is like, dude. I guess I'm just surprised that Pilot died made a similar play there for his own safe lane tower. They are going to commit the wards. Oh, Pi, Pi. It's a bit different because Pi. I've never seen a support care less about their life. <laughs> like, dude, life is precious. <laughs> Not according to Pi Lai Dai. I mean, Pi just died up here, and he dies again, and you don't... Pi's thinking to himself, like, space created, you morons. Like, <laughs> now we know where two of you guys were. Maybe we knew before, but now... <laughs> now we now definitely, we definitely know. know. You didn't TP back to the fountain. You've activated my trap card, <laughs> you fools. It's like, you miss, I don't know, Pi, I think Pi thinks like you come back stronger every time, you know, like, whatever doesn't really kill me. I was just thinking about that, they really need to make a hero around Pilot Eyes playstyle. This Wraith King, dude. Like, some sort of hero that you gain gold by dying, or you just get stronger by dying over and over again. Like, I would think Pilot Die would be, like, the ultimate techies player, right? There's a lot of 3k players that would love that concept. <laughs> you get stronger the more you die. <laughs> so, I have a, I have a bunch of... MMR account or something, and I was like, if you've got 70 MMR, why don't you just like get it to zero? Because they're very good players. Yeah. And they said like when you the MMR gets that low, do you? And so you all want it, you're all trying to. Get everyone to zero. wants to lose, so it's a new meta where 
<laughs> people trying to more efficiently die. And apparently, they're just... The guys that are doing it are like pros or something at it, so they're just much better at it than my friends are. <laughs> They've really broken down the game. Yeah, they the understand. Level. It's like when Grant was telling me about how he plays um, Ability Draft. Mm -hmm. He plays it with like Bleak and stuff, like, you know, yeah, some yeah, former yeah. pros and stuff. And he's like, they just get their ass whooped over and over again. It's yeah, because yeah. these guys know Ability Draft yeah, in and guys, out. These guys have really been rocking. <laughs> they understand how to lose on a very intimate yeah. level. It's like... You get down to zero, Mamar is just all pilot dice mercy. Like <laughs> <laughs> but Pi, it's it's just kind of been like the tenant of his play. Like we always make a joke about it, but if you think about it, if you're support and you're shoving out the waves, right, and more two or more heroes come to come to go kill you, then that's space that it's like it's not a joke. It's actually space that the other side doesn't necessarily get, right? Yeah. Like it opens up time for you know there are two heroes there, yeah. so we can make a play. It's contingent on having like slightly greedier cores, which he does. Like he has a Monkey King and a TA this game that he needs to create space for, and somebody has to shove out these waves uh, so that they can continue to get far. Well, Pilai dies a master at its craft, and he's gonna go for it again. No, this, this time, time around, around, it's a trap. They have the BKB from A, so maybe it's a double trap. But there's gonna be the Omni Knight ultimate, so it's pulls. a triple trap. Puppy, Goldo all the way through with a pump uh, bro strike, but he's still gonna be caught. There's so many Pumping layers it. to this game. <laughs> <laughs> now you see the true intricacy of professional Dota 2. <laughs> there's just layers on layers on layers on layers. <laughs> and we still haven't even seen the Eternal Envy play. Tries to go for the courier misses. That's wild. <laughs> like Pi, I mean, yeah, somebody died for it, but they also forced a troll BKB, and he did not die. Yeah. So, I mean, who's the real, who's the real loser here? <laughs> Clearly DJ. But aside from that, like the BKB <laughs> was used. Yep. That's a 10-second BKB charge. Like Pi's a. No. Oh! That was not synergy. Oh, no way. If he gets out because of this... Yeah, that, he definitely does. That is anti-synergy, my friend. Oh, no. They used their only two disables at the <laughs> same time. <laughs> I'm not sure who's having the flashback <laughs> moments yeah, here to Team Secret. One of them is. I just... know that for sure. It was like, <laughs> oh... Okay. Universe is like, I promised myself I would never do this again. Uh, that was wild. This would never happen. That was that was a really random moment. Which is why we're laughing at it. Cause <laughs> literally, they're two. He was pretty dead. Eternal Heavy is playing like no farming right now. He is just hopping around trees, trying to find some sort of team fights, some sort of situation they can get into an engagement. He hasn't even finished up his uh, Echo Saber. Yeah, he needs to continue to. Okay, misses on the hookshot, but I think he needs to get some amount of farm. Like, he can't afford to just get nothing for this long. Yeah, He's chasing heroes around for I don't think you really bit. catch the Sand King without the, the, with the hookshot already missed. I don't know, this Omni Knight's really fast catch. That is true. If you just caught him with the Old Scepter. But, I mean, still, it would have been so much time for all three of these heroes to kill a Sand King. The supports are just trying to buy space. Okay, Envy finally hops down. He's like, okay, enough of that. Puppy has learned the ways of Pilai die, but he's made the next step in evolution. He Living. doesn't actually die. Or oh. does he? <laughs> what? Did his TP get canceled? I, yeah, I think uh, Envy managed to hit him with the staff. Oh, boy. Yeah. I thought he was good. Okay. But as a result, look at this. The true genius. Look at look at Roshan here right now. I think yeah. they might just get Roshan for free. Uh... Maybe. We'll see. They're, they're actually getting close to the Roshan pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Gotta get out. I mean, they're, they're playing it against a uh, Templar Assassin, too. Yeah, so yeah. easy to get traps inside. You actually see that's uh, a Rubik trap that was inside of, of the pit as well. So both both teams have good vision of uh, that Roshan Both pit. teams are ready for this. You're playing against an NV lineup. You know. All right, round two. Seeker apparently had the idea to take Roshan before Eternal Levy has the opportunity to do. It's one of the best ways to never have to worry about it. <laughs> but Troll's starting to get a little bit low, and Secret... It's not the easiest fight in the world. Oh, jeez, this OD is just going to stumble straight to a world of hurt. Nice combination there with uh, Pilot Eye getting extra disabled with the Cogs push. Unfortunately, he just didn't have a damage to be able to finish him off. Now, Universe, 
An awkward bit of space there. Actually gets his repel stolen away from him. Bada thinking about Ravage. Actually going to be hexed up. Turned around. A little bit more control from DJ as he shackles committing his life for this one. His ace comes in with a BKB. Finally, Ravage does hit. Man to hit the Monkey King up in the trees as well. Eternal Envy's in a really great position to be able to lay out an ultimate if he wants to. Actually goes and tries to finish off mid one. Needs a little bit more damage. Can't quite get it. The cards go off for Pilot Die, but the repel is still there on a mid one. Yaptor is saving mid one's life long enough for Envy Will to get down the ultimate. Finally, he goes down, but it might just be a little bit too late. He may kill the OD, but it's going to cost off at his life as low. well. They full on committed to bring down mid one. Yapsor delayed that death long enough for Secret to be able to easily win that team fight. Yeah, he almost lived there too. Yeah. He was mid -anim animation for the Astral, and he gets out of there 100%. And now Universe getting gone on Secret. They're going to finish up this Roshan. Yapsor, it looks like he's still meld. Makes yeah. things a little bit faster. Right. Yeah, Roshan sure. Coming. Yep, and now Ace mind. picks up that Aegis. Now he's very farmed. What the hell? How, how does he still, like, meld a spell that's not supposed to be very useful and he's able to use it in a great spot for Rush? So, in that situation, they were able Ooh, to get... Oh, this is not looking trinal. so hot. The repel, they actually toss him outside of the cog's physical aim. is too much. Boy. This troll is hitting super hard, and if you throw down a gush as well... We're seeing the counter as well when you play Rubik against the Omni Knight. Yeah. It's consistently just sealing the repel over and over again. Yeah. Like, Universe is in an awkward position where you give up the heal, fantastic. You give up the repel, even better. You give up the Guardian Angel, oh, you made their dreams come true. <laughs> There's in, in a way, though, it is kind of a zen moment where you're like, it doesn't matter what spells yeah. I cast. He steals everything. Everything is good. Everything is good. And oh, Eternal Envy, what a beautiful ultimate. This is set up with a double stun. They're going to be able to take away that Aegis as well as finish off the Sand King. But the second life of the troll is going to be a bit harder. Envy, is he going to run out of his own ultimate? Yeah, this is retreat time. They're going to try and get out way, see if he can actually jump to a tree here pretty soon. Does manage to get it. Oh, what an annoying hero. Eternal Envy is able to jump, jump, jump. And Troll is not going to be able to catch him, but they might be able to grab Abed. Blink back. Fraction protecting against the gush damage by Light Die. Warding off the ref the secret a little bit more with the cogs. Staff comes down. They're actually going to make a commend here on the Yapsor. I don't think that's a good idea with the telekinesis. They definitely use a good idea. And they want more. I don't know. They just don't really have. Uh, I'm not sure if they can really take a team fight without Eternal Envy as ult. Yeah. So in the previous fight, remember, Envy had used his ulti for that top engagement. Yeah. It's layers to this game. When he used it to kill the Sand King, he didn't have it for that fight. And if he had... Envy. Knock him down the tree. He's going to be stunned for a long while. He's only oh, walking up for Ace to be able to finish off. Yeah. They finally punished him for it. Yeah. He's been hopping around those trees yeah. like a madman. That's where the supports come in handy, Cap, yeah. when they can force out these large ultimates. There was like 10 seconds left on this ulti in that engagement. But we saw how big of a difference it is when he does have it. They can kill things quite quickly. But it seems like this TA is just not going to be able to stand up to uh, the OD or the troll. I mean, these are two cores that definitely outscale you, and right now, OD is not that far behind the TA, and troll is uh, actually 2,500. He's now 3K after they've taken that tier 2 ahead of the TA. Yeah, I just struggle to see how the Templar Assassin is going to be able to make the comeback in this game. Hero that's not really well known for comebacks. Yeah, it's a little bit different, uh, just because her ability to scale is largely dependent on like what other kind of core she has. But normally, when you think of hero like Tia, like, you're the you're one of the true one positions in the game, right? But this hero like doesn't have her own disable. The gap close comes in the form of having your blink dagger, which is a heavy item commitment. That is a rolling watermelon. Goddamn! Look at him. He's fast. He's just trucking. With the phase boots and the drums, he is looking to be able to catch an extra hero, and it looks like he found him. Slows down DJ. DJ hoping not to give up a whole lot of intelligence to mid one. Once he's dead, he just tries to stop the insteal. Just kill me faster. Yeah. Don't take any more. Oh, mid one was on the chase. Knows that Envy doesn't have a BKB quite yet. Thinking about it, thinking about pump fake. Pursuing a little bit with the trees, but there is a Sand King behind him. 
Oh, they had a double damage on Abed too. Man, they really want to take that one universe. Caught a little bit out of position here. They can chain these stuns pretty easily with the Road Strike follow up with the Telekinesis. The universe is very dead. And they're going to pursue for more. Envy chilling out in the trees, though, won't be found. Is Envy playing this Monkey King career? Because uh, he's spending so much of his time in the trees. I guess my question is, is that what he's supposed to be doing? And, and they're just like, something's wrong with the team that they're not actually finding the engagements? Or should he be farming more? Is he spending too much time in the trees trying to, to make things happen? I think there was like a mid-game period. Because his battle for your time was sick. Yeah. He got it really fast. And then there's this mid-game timing where he just kept hopping around mid. Yeah. And he was just like going back and forth that I think was... That wasted way too much of his time. Like, that was the period when he needed to farm. He has that battle fury at a very good time. He can trip out the waves, be very aggressive around the map because it's hard to kill him. Now he's using this time to try to catch up, but... Yeah, if he had a BKB right now, the only threat would be Troll when he throws down his ultimate. Even that's not a threat if we get the plus 100 armor. Yeah. But now they're just hitting on the tower a little bit. Very nice item pickup so the way from Uni. Goes the Heavens Halberd. Dyer's, Dyer's Secret. Oh, that's an interesting one. The uh, Aeon Desk choice for our Outworld Devourer. So if he's jumped, he can play this a lot more on the front lines. It's interesting. You got a per perplexed look on your face there, Blitz. This game is just... It's weird because I felt like this, like, Omni Knight should just, like, take over. Like, once they pop GA plus the Monkey King ult, I felt like there shouldn't be a lot of ways, like, uh, for C for Fnatic to lose the fights, you know? Yeah. But they're just getting peeled around the map. It's hard for them to keep up. Pushed and pulled. Abed gets off the refraction, hoping that it'll last long enough for him to get off the blink. Pylon dies actually going to give up his life to make sure the Templar Assassin does manage to escape. Oh, Monkey King. Hop, hop, hop away. Getting closer to that BKB needs another 1,000 gold. You have to desperately, too. Where are we? Does it feel super good though when you're forced to get a BKB and you have an Omni Knight on your team? Although his priority, of course, is going to be Abed. And you can't really rely on that too frequently. I like how the range creep always knows. He's a detective. Detective creep. He went to school for it, Austin. I'm just imagining some sort of noir-esque show with this range creep He's on the detective. Base. It's going to be short-lived because it's one season. Those things die really fast, man. No. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. 21 to 10 right now. That kill score is indicative of how much Secret are ahead right now. They're actually up by 8k by 30 minutes. Looks like they're controlling the map pretty well. They've got the better late game on top of that with both the troll and the OT scaling really well. Monkey King and TA. Well, not terrible at scaling in the late game. Not going to be able to match that pace. Troll's got a butterfly. Ooh, that's going to make things rough for our Templar Assassin. He is so, so far from right now. They do not have a whole lot of magic damage either, so uh, I'm thinking this troll is almost invulnerable. Okay, that was... Mid-1 jumps in because he's super confident in the Yapsor. He's like, Yapsor does not miss this, let's go. Dyer's middle tower Completely whiffs. Yeah, if I'm mid-1, I'm daring them to go on me. We got an Aeon disc. Oh, he's an Aeon. Guaranteeing that you can get off the imprisonment. Blink away. Oh, that, that's an interesting Cox push. Midwan actually blinks into one, forcing himself deeper into the base, but it doesn't really seem like it's gonna matter, or maybe oh, it will, dead. with Eternal Envy already taking down the troll. Jesus! He died really fast! Yeah, the troll. He has no save. Yeah. They popped a lot of different abilities for that too, though. Yeah, and now, no Monkey King ultimate here. They're gonna try and catch Puppy, and just get the Burrow Strike ahead of the stun. 
They will be okay. Despite that death, now at 10,000 gold lead. More teams here. Do we gotta start turning this Omni Knight into like some sort of, do we, does he get like Radiance or something to turn into kind of a damage dealer? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe he just continues to take up a little bit more. Gets things like Shiva's. I mean, I mean, surely the... I'm not crazy, right? Like, Fnatic gotta win this game in the next 10 minutes. It, it, with their kind of lineup. They can always just burst the... the troll. Yeah? There's no... there's no real... The, the biggest save is the OD. But, but they still got a, a two-core lineup, right? You kill one of these heroes and the other one's always gonna be... strong enough to be able to win you a fight, right? I would agree. I'm just trying to find ways for Fnatic to still be able to close out this game. You always look on the bright side of life. Not really. That's true. I get into fights with way too many Navi fans for that. <laughs> I was gonna make a Navi joke there yeah, too. Yeah, were you? <laughs> <laughs> it's good times, man, you know? Sometimes you... You gotta live, you gotta really embrace the wild side of life. I mean, let's be real, we don't have uh, Alliance fans to trigger anymore, so... That's true. Some loyal fan base has gotta take the hit. Alright, so, so, they're smoked up. I like the smoke. Their lanes are starting to push in. They could run into one of the cores here, they would try to go for the high ground immediately. And their high ground game is fast. It's the best thing that Troll does for you. Yeah. So he punishes you real hard. Ah, Ben. Nice blink of the trees. Good positioning there. We can play the full-on Templar Assassin split push game. Laying down traps to cut creep waves. This is how they have to try to delay the game as much as possible as Puppy. See if they can force Secret out of position somehow. Secret really wants someone to get a little greedy and step forward and try and farm that. But Abed doesn't need to. He's got traps to farm it for him. They won't even get close to the tier three. So. And Eternal Levy can do the same thing, right? He can Primal Spring onto a Creep Wave. Kill onto a Creep Wave with his Q. So, uh, Secret, they are actually going to be a bit stymied by this one. I'm not sure how they're going to be able to solve this, uh, this puzzle. Dealing with all this split push, or maybe the answer is just simple. Yeah, they're gonna go first to force it. They can't give up the Roshan. Yeah, um, Fnatic are gonna be in a really good position to be able to fight this, this one. Really they really nice able, but they managed to get the force staff outside of that ultimate. Now Eternal Levy is kind of stuck in a position. He didn't want. Bada is actually gonna go into the Roshan pit. What is he doing over there? Bada just dies. Now the push from Pilai die actually pushes in the Zanking into the uh, ultimate oh, as well. DJ is taking up so much of right, the time right now. They're, they're still trying to push They do manage to get the Aegis as well as the Cheese. Now the fight continues. Mid wants already stolen a lot of intelligence, but the big cores are. Here, Universe pops the ultimate, turns and fights up against mid one, drops the ultimate, a big bomb, does a oh, good amount of damage. He actually finished off the Monkey King. He gets so much out from Puppy as well. They turn this fight and win it. Secret. I thought they were gonna get overwhelmed for a second there, but it looks like the OD is just too big, too bad. <laughs> Fanatic get wiped despite winning the Roshan. Oh, that taking the Aegis and cheese. Really feel like that should have been their fight, but like you said, the two cores were a little bit too powerful. I thought it just walked in, couldn't get Ravage <laughs> off, but at the same time, like, it didn't matter in the least. I thought maybe there was some sort of aggressive four staff or something. I'd have to look back at the replay, I'm not sure what happened to him, because that was such a weird thing for Vada to be doing. <laughs> but maybe he just really wanted to interrupt the Roshan attempt. A lot of 5x use for that one. 10 deaths at the 30 minute mark in this game is the second most. Really? I'm actually surprised by that. I thought it... <laughs> I thought that would have been like... 20th on his record. So Secret continued to build more and more of their leads. Why, is it, why do you think he went for this casual like chainmail, by the way? He's had this for a while. <laughs> yeah, what, what, what but he's, he went Hex. And he's not going AC. Was he thinking about going AC, maybe? 
I mean, they only have physical damage. For a second, for the when, most when you part, whenever right JJ that. hovers over it, it looks like the there's like a Mercedes Benz logo over the chainmail. Whenever he, he was hovering over the, now it's sponsored by MSI. MSI, chainmail sponsored by MSI. The Predator chainmail. There's a Ravage, managed to catch two out there. Fortunately, Repel was on Abed, but the Ribbix now going to be able to steal and just throws it on a mid one. The OD just a beast. How much does OD have? He has so much intelligence right now. He's going to be able to finish off the Omni Knight as well. 44, 44. intelligence 44. stolen. The 25 talent is the one that increases the duration by two minutes, right? Or a minute, sorry. Yeah, okay, so he doesn't have that yet. But much like a Slark fanatic, they gotta just avoid team fights. Not like there's they have much choice in the matter. They only have their two cores. They lost no three buyback. heroes with no buyback. <laughs> <laughs> they should probably avoid fights. Yeah, you should probably not take this two versus five. I right don't know now. if these fights are gonna be <laughs> successful for them. Also. It's the 44 intelligence that really makes the difference, Blitz. If that wasn't there, trust me. Fnatic would be all over this team fight right now, like White on Rice, like OD on a Templar Assassin, blowing him up with the Arcade Orbs. That's now a fourth hero down, quick buyback. How though. much is that, 84? Yes, that is 84, that is the number. Don't fight him, guys. <laughs> Does Abed even have intelligence left? Don't fight him. That man right there. It's starting to slowly slink down, so maybe if you wait another minute until they- Oh no! The Scythe of Ice, they're just gonna blow up the Monkey King, the ultimate, it really doesn't do a whole lot for them. The BKB pop by Ahmed, he's trying to focus on Avada, but he can't actually get that one kill at all. They've lost all their support there, just gonna call it, yeah. Yeah, DJ, DJ calls it. Good, good game. game. And a hey, Fnatic, once again, with some bright moments, but the Secret are way too much right now. And he's clapping it up, they're gonna be pretty pleased with that. Pretty clean 2-0. Yeah. Both games had these like weird hiccup moments, but I mean, secret.